Okay, here we go. Hey guys, it's Blue. Sadly, this is my last day here at the Ice Station Zebra in Medford, Mass. We finished um, the record last night. We finished mixing the record, which I'm really psyched about. Uh, first off, before I forget, I wanted to say thank you to you guys for helping me reach the goal of 200 pledges. Um, Ducky and I mastered the songs from the Bluesicle, which was actually really fun. Um, and so I hope everybody got uh, those MP3s and is enjoying them. So for this last little update, my last day in the studio, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the Ice Station Zebra and my best buddy, Ducky Carlisle. So I'm going to take the camera now. Ducky has been holding the camera. It's my new camera. He just got this camera. Yeah. It's supposed to be real nice. It's supposed to be. So, um, so Ducky, uh, I, I just want to ask you a few questions about Ice Station Zebra. Sure. First of all, the studio is in your house. Can you explain a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, short story. I had a big, uh, you know, old school 90s rock room back in the day. Big board, 24 track tape deck, and Pro Tools. And I actually had a fire there, um, which I thought was going to ruin my life, and it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened. At my good friend Blue's insistence, uh, he basically booked a session in my house. I was sitting on the couch being depressed, drinking beer and watching movies and wondering that what I was going to do with my life. said, oh, by the way, I've booked uh, a live album. Well, it's like 35 live in instruments <laughs> at once. Have it ready in two weeks. And so we uh, ripped the bar apart and uh, racked it up. And anyway, so long story short, my studio now is in my home and... Any sound I could get in the studio, I feel pretty comfortable I can get here, and more so, and it's much more comfortable. We were on a pond, and there's a kitchen, and my girlfriend's a great cook, and, you know, we're not sitting in a big stinky room in South Boston. Nothing against South Boston, but, you know, a big <laughs> mildewy, drafty room, so. And, you know, I one of the things that I really appreciate about this space that people might not immediately think of is the fact that um, the entire house is... A beautiful wood recording space. Pretty much every room of the house has been converted to do some yeah. sort of recording or another. Yeah. There's mics on the, <clears throat> the third floor for ambient, so we can get really close sounds or like Zeppelin-esque drum sounds. Also, just the economy, because the economy of the music business, just everything has been downsized, obviously. So, you know, keeping one facility instead of two and having it being your home makes it much cheaper to run, makes it, you know, easier for people to to uh, record here. If, if they need to, they can stay here, if I like them. <laughs> so, okay, th t tell me a little bit about the, the rack gear that you have going on. Well, okay. first of all, of course, the, the rack is the bar. There's a bar, yeah. It's an which, in and of itself, is... Well, um, you know, one of the great trends in recording in the last 20 years, it used to be you bought a mixing console, a Neve, or a Trident, or an Aim, whatever you could afford, but then you were sort of limited to the personality of that board, so people started pulling uh, preamps and EQs out of old boards, and now it's a whole market. So what you're seeing here is a variety of, of really pretty good stuff. Uh, there's about eight Neve preamps. There's four APIs. There's some tube PVs, which, believe it or not, are spectacular universals. Um, Would you say you have more good outboard gear than any other studio in Boston? Because I would say you do. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, I, Chris Rival's got some pretty good stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's, I'm certainly competitive in terms of gear and microphones of any big, you know, there, big room. Um, there's an amazing uh, Rhodes keyboard here. We have a original Farfisa. And uh, just, I want everybody to see all the guitars here. Th fine. These, This is partial electric guitar and bass. Collection. Just pick up your favorite. What's your favorite? I know it's impossible to pick a favorite, but if you well, had to pick one. You know, lately I love the big text. This is a boutique. This guy in Texas makes these. you got to wait two years to get one. I found it on eBay. And it's the big old honking telly. And it's got, every one has a Gillies beer ticket inside the cavity. So this is my current favorite. Blue hates this color, and I keep end up getting guitars in this color. Not really on purpose, but it just works out. No, you do it on purpose. No, my last one's pink. I have a pink telly now. Just so. Uh, and what about your favorite vintage guitar? Oh well, probably. Where is it? Like it's a 1959, 1960 Les Paul Junior, which is just the. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, it's like the Leslie West. Where the heck is it? I think it just plays so it. good. Hold on, hold on. Keep talking, Blue. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't see it either. 
That's right here. Oh yeah, there it is. This is oh, a, a double cut cherry Les Paul Jr. I loaned it to Mike Viola, and he liked it so much that he went and spent four grand on one a week later. Um, it's the classic. Uh, oh, it's it's amazing. Leslie West Mississippi so Queen. Um, Keith Richards seventy two Stones tour. Just honks. It's, it sounds like a baby seal being beaten. Uh, <laughs> And uh, here's the acoustic guitar collection yeah, off here in the corner behind, of gills, behind the hi-fi. Bunch of gills and some Gibsons. And then, might as well show them amps. Yeah, yeah. So let's just walk into the, this is the hallway. amp room. Hallway. The amp hallway. Um, how many amps would you say you have? Well, a lot of these are, are on loan from people that don't use them, so I keep them up for them. I maintain them. But I probably Just have, so you know, this is just the amps that are in the house. There's yeah. about this many more in the garage. Yeah, I've got a... I probably have 25 and probably 25 on loan. That's a Tweed Twin. Then in here, there's, you know, AC. This is the laundry room, but it stores. There's a clavinet, a beautiful Whirly, which couple, we've recorded many, many times. There's Leslie's, another Rhodes there. Here's a, few, here's a few amps. These are bass amps, yeah. I think I think for a lot of people, here's the here's the washer and dryer. Oh, 1965 Maytag. <laughs> That's a minute. Anyways, you can tell we did not clean. For this, for this. Oh, I rarely clean. And here's the booth over here, booth, which is also currently a mess, but yeah, a little vocal booth. Not fancy, but it sounds great. And you have how how many vintage? And well, well actually, no. These are actually no. I have what I tend to have is new boutique mics. I have like these are my two favorites. This is bait, uh, built by David uh, Bach of Sound Alex fame, and this is built by David Perlman. This is essentially a Neumann M49 knockoff. With the original capsule, and this is essentially an AKG C12 with an original capsule that. Um, but there are, but there's dozens of mics here oh, yeah. for every voice yeah. and every possible Beatles situation. Mic preamp, yeah, that Telephone. thing's incredible. Nice old flip top amp. That's the base amp we use. Here's Blues TV amp. Oh yeah, actually built into an old uh, console it, TV. And it's pretty awesome. It's actually a pretty great amp. If, if, if any of you guys have seen me play that amp, you've been seeing me play for a very long, long time. But I believe on the Major Labels record, it, that's, at least on the song, Major Labels, we got it made, that is the guitar and the bass amp on both. And yeah, I think on right. a, lot, a lot of other stuff, too. No, it's great. Um, so as we walk up the stairs here, yeah. just uh, mention to people a few of the records that you've worked on. That, oh. uh, that especially people who know my music might know, maybe. Well, uh, I co-produced and engineered and mixed Lurch for Mike Viola. And the Kelly Jones record, Shebang, that with Mike. Or as Ducky likes to call it. Shebang, just to piss <laughs> Kelly off. Um, <laughs> let's see, it's going to be dark up here. Um, other power pop records. I mean, a lot of local stuff, great stuff. Um, Eric Barrow. Just finished the Eric Barrow record. Um, Corn Ashley's record, Corn's great. I work with the, the Figs. I've worked with guys from NRBQ over the last couple years. I mixed a buddy guy, two buddy guy records in the last two years. Those aren't really cool. Graham. Oh, Graham Parker. Yeah, did some Graham Parker. Uh, let's see. Uh, Manny Moore made a great pop record here. Uh, Nora Jones has worked here a long time ago. Before she was Nora Jones. Buddy Guy, of buddy course. Guy, yeah. um, and you're, you're getting ready to leave in just a few days to work yeah. on the new Buddy Guy in record, Nashville, right? Yeah. And here's the basic live kit. So, you know, Ludwig, we have a few of this base. I keep buying the same kit over and over. And um, why? Because it's the best one. Well, yeah, it's it's it's. I, I like but you have it, yeah. you have how many snare drums? I'm just gonna. Oh, I'll, I'll show people that room for a second. But yeah, let's get the light on here. Let's get God, the light on in this room. Bad. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of snare drums. This is my dining room. Can you tell we don't eat here much? Would you say dozens of snares? I would say probably sixty to seventy snare drums. That's the organ from the uh, Boston '70s Boston Garden. So I call it the Bobby organ. <laughs> And actually, the sad thing is it only plays da 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 That's not true. We've used it on many records. Great jukebox over here. Great jukebox. But this is kind of like one of the main live rooms. I'd say the live room here. Yeah, we do... Beautiful, beautiful ribbon mics. Yeah, we do string quartets in here a lot. Many a string quartet's been recorded in here. Of course, this is the drum room. And then this tack piano has been on many, many a power pop record. For those who don't know what a tack piano is, it's it's literally a piano with thumbtacks on the hammers. And these are this is kind of a strange one because I I we couldn't find brass thumbtacks, so I put Plastic thumbtacks on it, but it, it, it ends also, up having yeah. a, a really neat sound. Another one of blues ideas. Because of it. That was another one of blues ideas. So basically, that's sort of the yeah. 
the gist of it. And let's just, uh, if you don't mind, I know you're in your bare feet, but can we just walk outside and oh, see, yeah, see sure. the pond real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go out front, unfortunately it's 35 degrees, but this is, uh, this is when you go out my front door. This is, now this is seven minutes from Boston, so this is pretty cool. Um, this is known as Wright's Pond, which is uh, it's a spring-fed pond. It's got a sandy beach and a sandy bottom, and I walk my dog there most days, and it's... And it's beautiful, it's beautiful. mainly. It's really beautiful. It's really, really gorgeous. It's nice to get away from the noise, and so I get a break over there sometimes. And uh, you just can't drink beer and smoke cigars there at midnight, I found out on many occasions. <laughs> But we have skinny dip with martinis at 3 in the morning. Yes, we have. So. <laughs> in the summer. In the, yeah, in the so, um, for those of you who decide to get the, um, have my song recorded by Blue or whatever we called that reward, this is just a brief look at yeah. where you'll be recording. We had a really, really great time we'll it, yeah. working on these rewards last time here at the Ice Station Zebra 73. Aquavia Road, Medford, Mass. Please, no hate mail. Yes. Um, and I don't know how to shut this thing off, Ducky. Oh, okay. Um, goodbye. I think you Bye, hit, guys. Hit the red button, right? <laughs>